last Monday on my day off, as the endless heat wave continued to cause havoc with our gardens and general well-being, I found myself imploring the Lord and His Blessed Mother to send some rain. The trees in the orchard have been yellowing more and more as the weeks go by, and the national park behind my farm, which supports an array of wild animals and plants, I feel, is groaning under the heat. Without water and endless heat, one can imagine the ultimate consequence. Death. True to form in the afternoon, God answered my prayers in full measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. We had a massive downpour of over 20 millimetres, both on the farm and in the national park behind me. As I was coming back to the parish on Monday night, it suddenly hit me smack in the face. It is easier for God to send a thunderstorm to my farm and deliver 20 plus millimetres of rain than it is to affect a response in the hearts and souls of those I'm praying for. Let me say it again. It is easier for God to send a thunderstorm to my farm and deliver 20 plus millimetres of rain than it is to affect a response in the hearts and souls of those I'm praying for. The very reason for this, brothers and sisters, is original sin coupled with our God-given free will. When God sent that thunderstorm, he didn't need any man or woman on earth to agree or not with what he was going to do. No human free will could intervene to stop the will of God from coming to fruition, from the earth and the plants and animals from being refreshed and restored. What has this all got to do with today's readings, you may ask? Well, brothers and sisters, today's readings show us how hard it is to be good, let alone be a good Christian. We pray for others, for their conversion and repentance, but we must also ask ourselves, do we do what Jesus says to do in today's gospel? Brothers and sisters, in all the words of Jesus as recorded in the New Testament, He's constantly proposing a better way for us to follow, to be good Christians, to be more godlike, to be more like him. And as Archbishop Costello often says, he proposes, he doesn't impose. He created us free and that is what we are. We are not forced to respond in compliance. We are invited to follow in love. Hell only exists because we have this God-given free will to say no, to block the good that God calls each and every one of us to each and every day. And what is the very first thing Jesus says to us in today's gospel? He says, I say this to you who are listening. Brothers and sisters, to become good Christians, we must firstly listen to Jesus and then put that listening into action by living not just a good natural, but a good supernatural life. A life beyond natural justice of an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth. He calls us to love like God loves, who, as he says, is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. In the first reading, we see David following Jesus' call a thousand years before these words were spoken. Though David himself wasn't without serious sin, of which he often repented, he showed himself living the supernatural life. He had more than one opportunity to slay King Saul, but he refused to do it, as Saul was the anointed of God. Saul was doing all sorts of evil against him, but David responded in a way that respected his role as the king of Israel, even though God had since declared him unworthy. And how did Saul respond to David's supernatural response? With further anger and plans to destroy David. Here we see why I say it is easier for God to bring a thunderstorm to my farm than to change hearts. Surely David's sparing of King Saul's life, and I'm sure many prayers would have given him the grace of repentance and conversion. Sadly, it didn't penetrate Saul's heart, which was so hardened against David, God and goodness in general. He was overcome by bitterness of heart. This, brothers and sisters, should be seen as an ominous warning to us. For no one ever said living a good Christian life was easy. 
Therefore, Jesus says, if you want to be my disciple, take up your cross and follow me. We must, with determination, applying our free will, work against the effects of original sin which still reside within us. We must bless those who hate us, love those who rob and cheat us, do good to those who do evil to us. And this requires a self-sacrifice of sorts, a self-sacrifice against natural justice, a self-sacrifice against saving face, a self-sacrifice against pride. Brothers and sisters, if we want to change the world, we must first change ourselves. And then we too, like Mother Teresa and the many saints who walk the same path, may, like God, bring thunderstorms and rain to quench the parched earth of the hearts and souls of our brothers and sisters for whom we pray.